Hello, dear students and researchers. Today, we are going to talk about a course on the research methodologies, the first chapters of the course, the foundations of knowledge, science research, and scientific and academic publications. I am Dr. Mohammed Irfan Maksud. I've done my postdoctoral works in academic publications after finishing my PhD in biotechnology. I have two master degrees, one in the master in biotechnology and second in the master of political science. I have several certifications which are, uh, which are available on my personal website, on my resume, and it has been about 15 years I am working in scientific and academic publishing doing the research. I have published about 28 scientific papers and received 515 citations till now. And also I have published about six books which are available on Amazon, on Apple Books and all other online platforms. Also in some popular bookshops around the world. And also I am working on the publishing of more than 100 books on different uh, disciplines, including the science fictions, including uh, uh, research and uh, scientific skills, also about the experiences and biographies and uh, learn the basic schemes. Today we are talking about the importance of and correlationships of research, science and knowledge. Research, when we define it, 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 it is known as a kind of scientific way to derive the knowledge. Why the knowledge is important? Because the human brain has been developed to survive, not for the developmental purposes. And the survival needs the knowledge. Whatever you think, for example, you plan about development, you plan about doing different things, but your brain is not designed for this, but your brain is designed for the uh, survival purposes. So if you want to grow up and grow larger, and if you want to develop, so you have to increase your problems so that your brain is automatically designed to survive. So when the brains will learn these survivals from small problems, big problems, big problems, and big problems automatically, the developmental process happens with this kind of survivals on different step. The human brains, since the day of first we are born, the, it is trying to gain the knowledge because knowledge, as we discussed, is providing the survivors. And the two things are directly related. One is the concerns and second are the curiosities. Human brains have some basic concerns, mean what the body is rare, in need for uh, feedings, survivals, uh, what kind of shelters do we need, what kind of social behavior should we establish, for example, if we are using abusive social behaviors, our survivals may be endangered by the society. Some basic curiosities, which are also related to the survivals, mean what is uh, the sky, what is the stars, what kind of uh, the earth cycles and the day and nights are happening. Because if the sun is too hot, it may endanger our survivals. So the brain is designed for this kind of curiosities to identify that yes, when sun is like this way or on this positions, it might increase the temperatures or it might decrease the temperatures, which is dangerous for the survivals. Also, the stars, they indicate the cosmic event also. And some other phenomena means oh, when it's at day times, when it's at night times, and these things help us to ensure our survival. If we remember the name of curiosity, it became very popular when the first time the NASA sent a rover to the Mars for the curiosity to know what is on the Mars. So when we say about the concerns and curiosities, the main things that we have is what, why, where, when, who. These are con known as the philosophy of knowledge. It is known as 5WH. 5WH is a philosophy, philosophy to know, to know whatever, what to eat, what to build, when to eat, when to build, why to eat, why to build, everything related with the survivals, where to sleep, where to live, 
So these all things are the, uh, related to the survivals. Since the ancient times, the human beings are learning this kind of knowledge, means they are developing this kind of knowledge for their survivals by using our trial and error mechanisms. The trial and error theorems is creating the knowledge. So whatever we are observing right now in our society, for example, which food we are eating, like for example, we are eating the potatoes, it does not mean that our brain uh, already knew that we have to eat the potatoes. It means our forefathers, our ancestors, they died by trying several foods and they reached a conclusion that, for example, the potato is a good food, this food is a good food, rice is a good food, wheat is a good food, fruits are good, these fruits are good fruits. So this trial and error knowledge helped us, this trial and error mechanisms or theorems helped us to build the knowledge. So we have two types of knowledge. One is come known as the priori knowledge and second is known as the posteriori knowledge. When we divide the knowledge into two categories, priori and posteriori, it is also clearly known as the analytical knowledge and the synthetic knowledge. Priori knowledge is known as a true knowledge or analytical knowledge. True knowledge means two plus two is four. But synthetic knowledge is knowledge which is developed over the time. It is not a true knowledge. Means it might be different from uh, for different geographical regions. For example, you know the day, uh, is uh, 13 hours in, for example, one geographic uh, uh, point, but the day could be a kind of uh, 10 hours in another geographic. So this kind of knowledge means day is of 10 hours or 13 hours or 15 hours or 22 hours. So it is a kind of synthetic knowledge because it is changing around uh, the different geography. But the priori knowledge is a fix. Two plus two is four everywhere in the world, everywhere in the space, everywhere in the uh, galaxies. So the priori knowledge is related with the logics, reasons, and analysis. So that's why it is also found, uh, known as, as true knowledge. But the posteriori knowledge is developed based on the experiences, observations, and evidences. And with the changing in the experiences, evidences, and observations in different geographic reasons, we found a different knowledge, and we called it as a posteriori knowledge, which is not a true knowledge, and is a changeable knowledge. So there is not just only two types of this knowledge. We have several other types of knowledge also. For example, the tested knowledge, which is also known as the implicit knowledge. And this knowledge are developed on the skills with the, over, over time. For example, you learn how to communicate with the peoples. If you want to teach the other thing, other peoples, that you know, I, I communicate with the peoples or society like this, you guys can also com communicate with the peoples, but you cannot teach it. For example, how to walk, you cannot teach it. For example, how to talk, even you cannot teach it. These skills which are developed over time, how to find a new ways, how to get acquitted with the new peoples, for example, understanding the new cities, new cultures, these are naturally born skills which developed over the time. So this knowledge which has been developed over the time inside our brain, it is called a tacit or implicit knowledge. The second type of, another type of knowledge is the explicit knowledge, which is exactly opposite of this which is based on the stored data of files. You can learn it from the books. You can learn it from the databases. For, so the process, what you are all mostly, the people are doing actually reading books and reading the papers. It is a kind of explicit knowledge they are uh, getting. Another type of knowledge is known as the declarative knowledge. It is based on the historical fact. For example, a person died on this date. So when a person died on this date, it means it has been declared by someone or by some authorities, by some persons, by some famous public peoples, and it had been approved and written in the history. Or for example, this country has gained independence from this country in this. So it's a geographic and historical fact. So when the geographic and historical facts are declared by some peoples, this kind of knowledge is known as declarative knowledge. And of course, the another two types of knowledge are the priori knowledge and the posteriori knowledge we have discussed already. So how to dig this knowledge? Whatever the kind of knowledge is, mostly what we have uh, talked about, we have discussed about this kind of posteriori knowledge. So how to acquire the posteriori knowledge? There are several general mechanisms of the knowledge acquisitions. For example, if I say, guys, go and get some information about 
what is happening in the society. So this knowledge, for, to gain this knowledge, you have to go to the society, talk with the people, do observations, do the interviews, focus on groups and talk with them, establish some forums, do some kind of technological talks, understand the society, what is happening. Also, you can use some kind of intelligent systems. You can participate in some research groups, those who are already working on the same topics. Also, you can develop some kind of questionnaires, ask the people about their lifestyle and to reach a conclusion that what is happening in this society. So there are several ways of acquiring the knowledge. But generally, we will talk about the four methods. The one method is the method of tenacity, which is related to the faith and beliefs. The second method of, the, uh, of acquiring the knowledge is the method of intuitions, means based on the logics and analysis. The third method is the method of authority, which is based on the orders and laws, means laws and orders are passed by the parliament and people have to follow it. So it become a part of knowledge. For example, this is how you live your life. And the fourth method is the method of science, which is based on the observations and experiments. So considering these uh, first two, for example, the method of tenacity and the method of authority, these are some kind of the knowledge we discussed already, but the method of intuitions and the method of science, these are all the priori and posteriori knowledge. The method of intuitions is a fixed knowledge, true knowledge. Sometimes we have to discover it. For example, as I discussed two plus two is four, uh, but the second is the methods of the science, which is based on the observations and experimentations. So in scientific methods, which is also as, uh, known as the posterior knowledge, the category of posterior knowledge, in this method, we start observing the things, creating the questions, defining the research topics, developing the hypotheses, doing the experiments, analyzing the data, and publishing the reports or the conclusions. So this, this method is called as uh, the scientific methods. If we take the examples of this coronavirus, which uh, the whole world was uh, suffering for this pandemic, and with the passage of times, the whole world was suffering with this, and the, the whole world, uh, in the whole world, 770 million people were infected, where 7 million, about 7 million people died, and still the cases are rising, the whole world was stuck, and then the scientific methodologies used to identify these problems and to solve it. So we are taking the examples of this uh, COVID-19 as a case to study the scientific method. So the first step in scientific method is to recognize a problem. For example, the, in case of COVID, it was discussed that people are dying rapidly after catching a flu-like disease, but it is not a flu because it has some other symptoms also which are not associated with the flu. For example, the people are losing their senses, people are feeling the shivering process like other things, so it is not a flu. These incidents are happening in one city and the expanding to the other based on the connectivity. For example, the one city from where the COVID happens, Wuhan, the all cities where the Wuhan had directly flight, the cities were also uh, trapped by this kind of incidents, the COVID. Also, the peoples in the surroundings of the Wuhan, the, they, they were also uh, getting the same diseases. So, this problem is rapidly expanding. So this is a problem. And they say that it is an unknown disease spreading rapidly and killing the people within one or two weeks. So this is a problem. If the people consider that, oh no, this is not an important problem. So when the problem is not recognized, the scientific methods will not be applied very well. So to apply the scientific method very well, so we have to recognize the problem. When the problem is recognized, the second step in scientific method is the observations and study. Observations means what kind of symptoms we are having. For example, high fever, last of senses, etc., etc., listing all the observations. Then also, uh, the first person in the infect in uh, every house or family is who is in direct contact with the society. So the problem is coming outside the society. It is not born inside the houses. It means it's not a kind of genetic or uh, the household problem. It is coming from the society. So it means uh, there are some kind of direct contacts like touchings and etc. These things are happening. That's why the disease 
is spreading and it's a kind of contagious disease. So these kind of observations are divided into two categories. One are the qualitative observations and second are the quantitative observations where we consider the quantity, number, amounts. But in qualitative observations, we uh, study the characteristics of the problems. So after doing the observations and studies, we develop some kind of hypothesis. Means if all people who are working and in contact with this society are getting this flu-like disease, so it's a contagious and preventative measures could stop it. So this is our first hypothesis. For example, another hypo hypothesis developed means a novel infectious particle is causing a flu-like disease and spreading at an exponential rate with a higher mortality rate. Also, an other hypothesis was also developed. It means it's an infectious disease then all who died should have the infectious particle in the blood. So when we developed this kind of hypothesis, we characterized that what kind of hypothesis these are. These are the deductive hypothesis or these are the inductive hypothesis because we have to develop, when we are following the scientific methods, we have to go either general to specific hypothesis or specific to general communities. So after recognizing the problems, doing observations and a little studies, a kind of literature study and also developing the hypothesis, we go for, we choose the best hypothesis based on some several characteristics. It means these hypotheses are not developed by an ordinary person. These are developed by the experts. There is uh, answers to all these statements. We have several uh, solutions. We can test it. It should have some kind of several characteristics. And then we go for a kind of deductions. Deductions, are the narrowing down of the hypothesis. These are the logical consequences of a hypothesis. Means uh, we reach, we, we change our hypothesis to if and then. For example, if it is this, then th what? If it is this, then what? So that then what is that, which led to the next stage of the development of the experimental uh, scheme. So in the case of COVID, the deductive approach uh, were also published because it was uh, rapidly problems and what were the people's identifying, they were publishing it. Because the, so the other people from the different communities, they can also identify the same problems and they can do some kind of preventative measures to stop the problems or even to reduce the spread. So the deductive approach uh, based on the spreading of the COVID was published and then the people's and after this, it was not just one report, several reports were published in different societies, all said it's a contagious disease and we can use the preventative measures to stop the spread. When we know all these things, we go for the experiment and analysis of things. The experiments are a comprehensive approach to test a hypothesis and to compare the deductions made by the scientific communities, because when the experiments happen in one society, we distribute it to the other society, it means we share the knowledge with all. So all the peoples, they do the experiment and they uh, discuss their results. And based on these results, we do comprehensive analysis. So in case of COVID, the experiments were testing the blood of all died, infected and healthy persons in different experimental groups. The statistical analysis was done to increase the probability of validity of experiments to prove or disprove the hypothesis and to reach a testable uh, decotations. When we do the experiments, we do the analysis, then we go for the conclusions and reporting. When all these things happen, some conclusions were made, means an infectious particles originated from and other mammals, bat, in is the cause of the pneumonia flu-like disease. And also the, some kind of papers, uh, when they are concluded, they, they, they reach the conclusions, they publish these papers in prestigious journals, so all other the scientific communities can have access to this. For example, this was the first, uh, among the first reports we published uh, pneumonia outbreak associated with a new coronavirus of probability, uh, probable bat or regions. Uh, published by the Wuhan scientists. Till now, it has received 12,000 citations with 12,000 people around the world, so research communities, they cited this uh, report. So when they identified the problems, then they built a kind of scientific theory that how this disease is happening. Then there are a lot of repetitions of the experiments. This uh, process is continuous, continuous until 
the scientific theory changed into scientific law. When scientific law is established, the scientific law is established by the global policy, scientific policy centers, like in case of the COVID-19, the European Centers of Disease Prevention and Controls, the American Centers for Disease Prevention and Controls, and all other the prestigious centers for disease and prevention controls, they uh, develop this kind of scientific law that COVID-19 disease is caused by a virus of the coronavirus family, SARS-CoV-2, in the order of mitovirals. So this uh, scientific law, when it was established then, they follow the process of this science, which is happening in two steps. One, science inside the lab and science outside the lab. Outside the lab is most important also because in inside the labs, you identify the problems, you do the experiments, you develop the, you propose the solutions, but then it goes to the policy makers, ethics are studies, a lot of other outcomes are studies and then, following the strategies of science outside the labs, the problems is transforming into a solution. So science inside the lab and science outside the lab is a kind of problem solution remedy, which resulted from a problems to the vaccinations means control. So this problem solution remedy science inside the lab and science outside the lab is an important step. So now we uh, go for the first steps, the knowledge. Knowledge actually is a learning process. For example, we are learning from some things, but science is a developmental process using the research methodologies. So research methods are developing the scientific knowledge. This is the, uh, what we are going. So research is not just a methodology. Research actually is a broad term. Research is defining, redefining and solving the problems. The research is also, for example, if you are looking for some kind of lab works or experimental works to say that I'm doing a research, it does not mean. Research is also observing the facts and their interpretations. You can also uh, formulate the hypothesis and you can do the experiments to test them, but not just only this is the research also revising or reviewing the existing theories and laws and building a new concept in a, presenting in a new way is also known as our research means we have studied about thousands of papers the latest papers in the last five years related to our topics and you found some kind of discrepancies in these papers then you developed you presented a new concept using these data it is also called as it is also known as a research and your papers, you can uh, publish your theories into a paper. Also, the practical applications of all this information which is generated via the research mechanisms to develop the vaccine, it is also coined as research. So research actually is a narrow, is, is a connecting point of all the logics, reasons and evidences which leads to a kind of development of a priori knowledge from the posterior knowledge with the passage of time. So why we have to do a research? It is an important stuff. Research actually is a tool in defense, not in defense industry, defending the society from the viruses, from the bacteria, from the psychological issues, from the social communications, from the diseases, from everything, even from the economic collapse, so research is a tool of defense. Research is also a way to serve the society. Research can help you to do the management in a better way because to identify the problems of an organization and develop it into uh, good solutions. The research is also uh, being done to pursue, to pursue the prestige, I mean the professors, the scientists, the Nobel laureates, the laureates of the other uh, categories, they are considered the prestigious minds, the, the significant minds of the society. So that's why the president of every country, they are selecting the fine minds or the brightest minds from their communities and awarding them every year with the presidential awards because only the research that can help you to get the, that kind of targets. Research is also uh, being done for the excitement of discovery. Some people who, who have the courage, who have the excitement to know more, to more new things, to discover the new horizons. So they, they do the research. Research is also done to uh, study the in-depth on a subject, for example, in-depth knowledge of a subject. 
for example, you are interested in what is happening in a society, I means social behaviors, and you are going to do, going to study everything about the uh, social anthropologies. So you have to do the research mechanisms. Research is also required. Uh, research is also being done to, if you need the publications and also for a higher degree. Mostly the community in the world, they are doing the research just to get a master's or a doctoral degree so that they can get a better jobs. But the job is not finished. The job of research is not finished yet. The research is all, research is a kind of a habit, the, the, having the combinations of all this stuff. So what are the benefits of research? As we discussed why we have to do the research, it's not just like this. With the research, we are solving the problems of the society. We are making the life easier. So we are developing the life. We are uh, securing the life. For example, we are wearing better clothes. We are building better uh, houses. We are expanding the frontiers of the knowledge. We are building the libraries. We are going to another planet. We are discovering the universe. Also, with the passage of time, we are going for new discoveries, new innovations. What is for example, if we go 30 years ago, there was no mobile phones, not such kind of information technology, telecommunication technologies. But now we have uh, a lot of new things. Research is uh, also can help you to build a kind of infotainment programs, not just only the entertainments. So entertainment transformed to the infotainment, mean informative entertainment, the entertainment where you can get the information, for example, the historical movies, for example, the science fiction is giving a new concept, the, uh, the movies on some kind of uh, viral infections, viral outbreaks, how to protect yourself. So with the entertainment, you can get the information for the survivors. Also, you can go for the luxury and comfort life if uh, by using this uh, research techniques. And we can increase the efficiency and reducing the cost of the products developed and uh, for the society. And also the research helps to grow economically. If you see the countries who are doing higher research, their economy is growing better because the research uh, is giving the uh, help to uh, grow the economy. So when we say research, the persons who are doing the research, they are the scholars. So the persons who are learning, they are called the students, it means reading books and like this. But the persons who are doing the research, they are called the scholars. They are not the students actually, because they are discovering things. So the research has two outputs. One is the articles, the scientific articles, and second is the patents, means technological patents. The articles are having scientific information where as the patent, they are having how to build a technology, how to build uh, solutions. So as we discussed, the science inside the lab and science outside the lab, actually it is a combination of these two things, the science and technology, where we are have developing the information and we are developing the solution also. For example, consider, a home agri farms. This home agri farms, uh, every people, every villages, they are having like this. In this agri farms, if we take the example of this, the scientifically, when we study, we can study the causes of the low problems, uh, the, the low productions. We can study the decline of quality or the impurities in the foods. But in technology, when we follow this process, we look forward the increased productions we uh, study to preserve the quality and to enhance the taste. So now we go to the scientific articles. There are several types of scientific articles, means original research papers, literature review papers, research notes, reports, clinical case studies, epidemiological reports, scientific letters, commentaries, opinions, scientific hypotheses or ideas, scientific policy reports, technologically development reports. Uh, there are also some other type of scientific papers when it comes to the papers, which we have described the short, brief descriptions of these papers on our Science Insight uh, Academy YouTube channels. You can, uh, you can get the basic information about all these papers. With the passage of time, we will also explain what kind of these papers are and how they are done. So after getting our basic information, let's come to know some basic about scientific and academic publishing. Scientific academic publications is publishing is a process actually of producing, developing, and distributing the scientific content, which are these research, review papers, opinions, perspectives, and like this. So 
considering the examples, the, because currently the era is the information and uh, telecommunication era, and the science uh, publication is has been much easier. If we see the websites, all the websites, most of these websites, they are developed based on the content management systems. The persons who are working on the websites, they know better about the WordPress, the Joomla, like this kind of content management system. The same like this, content management system is also in the scientific category, which is known as the scientific content management system. We called it as a journal management systems because these scientific contents are published by the journals. These scientific content management systems also have some key players involved in it. For example, the authors, the editors, the reviewers, the system administrators, and the uh, press administrators or the journal managers. To consider, to understand more about the scientific publishing process, we have to understand what happens when we write a paper. After we write a paper, it goes for editing. We can do the edits, the professors, the experts can do the edits, then it goes several process of revisions, then it go for the publication process, and when it is published, it go for the distribution process. So this chart is a kind of comprehensive analysis of about uh, the writing to edit and formatting the papers, then submitting to a journal, then it go for revisions, review, review, reviewing by reviewer ones or reviewer tools, and if it is accepted, it goes for publications and it is published on the journals. And if it is rejected, then again, it go for the revision process. Again, the editing and formatting happens, again, submissions and again, review process. So this process continues until the paper is accepted for the publishing. When it is published, it go for indexing and after indexing, it go for the distributions to the global community. So in review process, we have two kinds of reviews, uh, three kinds of reviews. Uh, it is also known as the blind peer review process, open peer review process, and collaborative peer review process. The blind peer review process where the authors and the reviewers, they don't know each other. Whereas in open peer review, uh, either the reviewer knows who is the author and, or the author knows who is the reviewers. In collaborative peer review, actually it is, for example, an author is submitting a paper and uh, referring some well-known people of the subject to the journals that please, I know these people, they are well aware about my research works and they are well-known scientists, you can ask them to review. If they review my papers, it is kind of collaborative peer review process. So after this peer review process, everything happened, paper is published and indexed. We, uh, this paper goes to some kind of scientific indexing databases. Before publishing a paper, we should know what are the scientific indexing databases because it, help us, it helps us to identify the which journals we are going to publish our papers or submitting our papers. Generally, we have three indexing databases. One are the general indexing databases. Uh, like Google scholars or social medias like this. The second is, uh, and there are many journal, general indexing databases. And then from this, it is a subject specific indexing databases. In every subject, it is the one, there is a one most prestigious uh, database in the world. For example, in medicines or biology, the PubMed is a subject specific, most prestigious indexing database, and it is one in the world. Also in engineering, the IEEE, it is the most uh, prestigious subject specific indexing databases. And after this, we have a journal ranking databases. The, currently, the two most pre prestigious journal ranking databases are theirs. One is known as the Web of Science and second is known as the Scopus. These journal ranking database having an impact factors which uh, is given to the journals by the these databases based on their citations. So citations actually are the referencing, bibliographic references of, the, of your papers. For example, you publish a paper, someone found it as an interesting paper and they uh, referred your uh, papers in their bibliographies as a source of the references of the study. So you receive one citation, then two citations, then three citations. And the impact factor is a kind of general mean of the citations per papers published by a journal. And this impact factor is given by the Web of Science by our journal citation reports. 
So the other journal indexing uh, ranking databases are also giving some kind of other factors uh, or indexing uh, metrics which are different and we are not going to talk about this right now. So to study comprehensively further about the scientific writings and research methodologies, you guys can uh, read my book, Simplifying the Scientific Writings under the series of Learn the Basics. It is available on Apple Books, on Amazon Books. You can purchase it, you can request it, and you can read online. Also, those who are the uh, premium members of the Apple Books are the uh, Amazon Primes. They can read these books freely. They can download the PDFs and read freely. It is available on the website. Thanks. Anytime, if you guys have any questions, you can uh, reach me at on my social media at uh, mimaksud and also on my personal emails, mimaksud at gmail.com. Thank you.